Last video, we covered Tobit's view on tithing biblically, and the one before, really, uh, his application. But when we match it to Deuteronomy, we find Tobit's uh, execution of the tithe to be accurate to Scripture. Uh, now we will address, as promised, John MacArthur's answer in an interview on biblical tithing. No, we're not covering everything he's ever said. The guy said an awful lot. Uh, happy to uh, address him if ever he wants us to. But it sounds coherent until, well, we read the Bible and understand it says what it says, and it doesn't say what he says it says. Why? Because he doesn't actually know the answer. Uh, what he knows, not from the Bible, what he knows is Phariseeism. What he knows is a trap that's been set for the church and he's fallen for it. And he's done it on many occasions with many topics, all especially regarding the Old Testament, which means he'll never understand the New Testament because he doesn't understand the foundation of the Bible. Now let's take a couple of minutes and hear how this very famous preacher handles the tithe basics. He doesn't know them. Something he should have a very good handle on, yet there are six lies, six, right here in this two-minute clip. See for yourself. Watch him fall for that Pharisee trap of Josephus where he claims the Old Testament paid 23% in tithes. Well, he defined tithe even in himself, and that's 10%, not 23%. Uh, you forgot in two minutes what you said? That's pretty bad. So really, 20% the first year, 20% the second year, and 30% the third year, that's right out of Josephus, and he calculates to 23% because he's taking the third year, and he's splitting it. So that's what he's doing. He's following Josephus. He's following the Pharisees. He doesn't know the Bible. He doesn't know the Old Testament anyway. Let's be clear. And it's very sad. Here's John MacArthur in his words. Old Testament. Tithe is a tenth. It's, just a, it's an old word that means one-tenth. In the Old Testament, you had a theocracy. Not a democracy, but a theocracy. That is to say, you had the nation of Israel ruled by God who mediated his rule through the priesthood. 24 courses of priests. They were basically the officers of the theocracy. They mediated the rule of God through the revealed law of Moses to the people. <clears throat> and the people needed to supply funding for those officers, the, namely the priests and the Levites who served along with them. Um, so there was a, a tithe tax that was essentially the basic tax to fund the national government. It was one-tenth of whatever it is that you earned. Uh, it could be commodities, uh, not particularly money, grain, oil, fruit, whatever. Um, then you had a second tithe every year, which was designed to fund the national celebrations, the feasts, the festivals, uh, to provide all of that that the nation Israel engaged in, and there were a whole series of feasts, as you know, and uh, funding temple events when the whole of the people came together, like the Passover and all those things. Then you had a third tenth every third year, which was the poor tax that was distributed to the people who were poor. So if you split that into every year, it's about three and a third percent every year. So essentially, every Jew paid 23 and a third percent with the addition of a fixed amount of temple tax with the addition of they couldn't harvest the corners of their fields that had to be left for profit sharing to let the poor take that. If you dropped a bale off your wagon when you were harvesting you couldn't pick it up that again would supply for needy people who would hang around the fields to pick up and glean whatever they could get. So you might say that it could be somewhere between 24 or 25 percent of, of the income of an Israelite living in the kingdom that was funding the national government. That really was taxation. That never was free will giving. That never was what we would call free will. Is it true that in the Old Testament people were commanded, as MacArthur says, 
uh, by that evil law of Moses he always denigrates and attacks because it's it's just so disgusting. Doesn't he know that Yahuwah wrote part of it with his very finger and it was commanded by him? How stupid. This guy doesn't know the Bible. Let's be clear. He's a deceiver. Um, he hates Yahuwah's law. In other words, he loves sin because sin is lawlessness. That's what James says. The very definition of sin is John MacArthur, his teaching. A pastor or whatever his higher role who hates Yahuwah's ways, that's a problem. And it's a problem for much of the church. That's where we are in the course of prophecy and history and why the Bible says only a remnant exists in these last days. And he demands with fervor that you sin. That's what he's doing. He's preaching. He's punching the pulpit, banging, telling you, demanding that you break the law. Yeah, wow. He is incredibly rebellious. That's the reality. He is downright mean in his dealings with especially the Sabbath, the law, the feasts, and even the tithe. Uh, and he, he He's speaking in ignorance. He doesn't know it. He doesn't know the Old Testament. He hasn't even made himself an expert of the Old Testament because he hates it. Let's just call it what it is. Yahushua was not a rebel and he knew the Old Testament. The apostles preached from what? They didn't have a New Testament yet. They preached from the Old Testament. Duh. Therefore, he better know it or he is no pastor to anyone. You know, basically, he's got the wrong God. Oops, no, that's pretty much what his whole doctrine shows because he's talking about a different religion that does not exist in the Bible. There are six lies, six, in this two-minute segment. Now, that's extremely poor and pathetic. Is it true they were commanded to give 23%? What's he doing? Peddling Pharisee doctrine from Josephus very stupidly. No, it's not true. That is a lie. Tithe is Tenth, one tenth. That's it. Not twenty-three percent. Ten doesn't equal twenty-three. MacArthur, learn how to count. Learn how to read the Bible and understand it. Instead of your Pharisee nonsense, you don't even need to know. Now we covered in the last video that Josephus is the origin of this nonsense, uh, and here it is on screen again. You can do the math and figure out how he gets the twenty-three percent. Uh, he's taking the third year and splitting it over the three years is what he's doing. But you do the math and it's 20% the first year, 20% the second year, 30% the third year in utter Satanism. This is Satanism. This is not Bible. The Bible's only 10%. It doesn't go to any of these percentages. It has different purposes each year. Always 10% of that year's increase, period. Nothing over and above. Anything over and above is not a tithe. It is an offering. Now, he should know that, you would think, but he doesn't. So, basically, he's splitting the third year, the 10% there, into three. Uh, so, that's where he gets 23% each year is how he's applying it, which also is the wrong way to apply it. But regardless, at least you can understand where it comes from. This is Josephus. This is a Pharisee. This is not what the Bible says. The Bible says 10% each year. 10% only from that same year, according to Deuteronomy. It's pretty clear. What kind of New Testament pastor quotes Josephus, whom he doesn't like, uh, as the source for how to read Deuteronomy without even bothering to read it for himself? Obviously, uh, if he did, uh, it is with Josephus's lens, of course, uh, false Pharisee understanding. This is too poor uh, as far as research goes. It's lousy. Uh, and even, you know, to understand, Josephus was a Pharisee. He doesn't know that. Uh, he doesn't know the Bible. He also doesn't know, uh, you know, things like Essenes uh, did not live in Qumran. Those were the actual temple priests. Uh, and the Pharisees defiled the temple. So you don't go to the Pharisees to try to figure out how to read the Old Testament. That's the wrong religion. Totally. And somehow, you know, many uh, Christians think that's the basis of their religion. Well, maybe it is, but it's not the Bible. Uh, and that's the problem. So 
He's not teaching the truth because he doesn't know it. Um, uh, he's probably not a bad guy. He seems like a decent guy. But regardless, he's lying to people. Uh, and, and he's doing so in ignorance, there's no doubt. Uh, instead of reading his Bible and understanding it without such prejudice. This is how you screw up the Bible. And MacArthur, Johnny Mac, is a master of that, unfortunately, as most PhDs are. Because uh, they're just not educated, not properly. They are miseducated and profoundly so, because they don't do their own research. And that's not all he screwed up here in just two minutes. That's just number one. Let's keep going. Again, thanks to Tobit, which MacArthur does not know because he does not just follow Pharisees with the Old Testament, you know, giving doctrine, which he clearly is, uh, but also even on what Bible canon is. Yeah, he has a Pharisee canon. Uh, that's what he reads. That's what he'll, again, beat the pulpit to demand the Freemasonic 66 books, uh, which uh, very clearly in history are not the accurate Bible canon. Yeah, all the New Testament, or the Old Testament is there uh, in Qumran with the temple priests, legitimate temple priests, except for the book of Esther, which he would fight, you know, and we dismantle. He'll never be able to. Um, and missing several books found in Qumran that are, in fact, Bible canon, uh, Tobit being one of them that tests us so. So basically, what's he doing there? Well, he's also following Josephus and the Pharisees and their canon instead of the Bible canon. That's pretty bad. Tobit breaks down Deuteronomy, which Johnny Mac doesn't understand. A tithe is a tenth. No, he said that. Uh, no doubt, in the beginning of his interview, but he forgot two minutes later, um, okay, um, <laughs> when he says that the Old Testament tithe was 23%. That's illiterate. Didn't happen. It was 10% each year in a cycle of three. We've all explained this. Let's move on to the next. Again, just so you have it, here's the word in Hebrew again, and it means 10th, not 23%. Duh. This is not that difficult, and you would think a pastor of supposedly his caliber, which is actually pretty low in the kingdom because, well, what did Messiah say? He said, if you teach against my commandments, you will be the lowest in the kingdom. That's what he says. Oops. Yeah, not so great. Uh, read Matthew 5, 17 through 20. Ooh, ouch. In this two-minute clip, great big long two-minute clip, it's clear this guy either has never read the Old Testament, uh, of course without a fallacious lens, uh, or certainly has never attempted to understand it, because this is not even elementary. It's, it's so super illiterate. Uh, his research is horrible. Uh, here are five more false statements in this two-minute segment alone. That's six total. In two minutes. Wow. This guy has little understanding of the Old Testament and he hates it, right? So he doesn't want to read it. He doesn't care about the Old Testament, uh, which means he doesn't care about the foundation of Scripture. He doesn't really know Yahuwah <clears throat> very well, uh, if, if that's the case, in our opinion. Uh, but basically, he's never taken the time to understand it, which means he'll never understand the New Testament. We could do this on his satanic Sabbath teaching for hours, where he teaches you how to sin, and how to sin, and how to sin, and how to sin. That's what he's teaching. That's his doctrine. MacArthur teaches sin. Got that? Because this guy, well, he doesn't represent the Bible. He represents teaching against the law, which is sin. He says a lot, and it even sounds good, essentially, initially, until you research it, test it. And a test is trash. Again, prove all things, folks. Don't just take our word for it either. He doesn't know. His knowledge is less than elementary, regardless of all of his advanced degrees uh, and the many that put him on a pedestal, which is meaningless. This is the guy, many credit, and I want to address this, for one of the dumbest doctrines of our modern day leading the lambs to slaughter. Once saved, always saved. Now, we don't know whether he originated that or not, but if, in fact, he did, he certainly preaches it, um, it, it defies free will. Therefore, it's already a lie. 
because if you're saved and you no longer wish to be saved, you have the free will to say, I'm no longer saved. That's a terrible thing, and hopefully no one does that, yet many do. How stupid, and no scripture ever says that. Uh, salvation is a relationship, and it must progress, period. Yahushua defined it in Matthew 7 and John 15. The whole chapters, you got to read them all to understand. And what does he say? To keep his commandments if you love him. Yeah, uh, it's super clear. But watch grafted into the kingdom. This guy does not know salvation. He doesn't know tithing. He doesn't know Bible holy days. Uh, it's pretty bad. I mean, this it gets to the point where it's like, wait a minute. This guy's preaching another gospel because he is. See, Paul didn't preach that gospel. Paul taught what we are teaching here. This is the ancient understanding. So, basically, uh, he knows his denominational doctrine, and I'm sure very well. But that's not the Bible, and many times doesn't derive from it. So, number one, basic, tithe equals tenth. Ten percent, never twenty-three percent, and that's not Bible, that's Pharisee. Number two, somehow, MacArthur does not know 1 Chronicles 24, for instance, uh, nor much of the Old Testament in what he babbles often, uh, that the priestly courses, well, they were not in place in the days of Moses. That's inept. Uh, it's unscholarly. It's uneducated babble. He really has no clue what the Old Testament says, largely. They started with David, who was king, uh, not a theocracy, as was Solomon and so on, and actually King Saul was the first king, David was the second. That's not a theocracy, so he doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, priestly courses, though, were not in place when the tithe was set up back in Deuteronomy, nor in the days of Abraham and Jacob, who tithed long before Moses, and MacArthur should know this stuff. Clearly he doesn't. Uh, nor is it part of just the law of Moses. It started before Moses. Oops, so did circumcision. Oops, this guy has a jaded view on the Old Testament because he doesn't know it and he hates it. Let's be honest. You can tell very clearly in his sermons. Lie number three, the priests of the priestly courses were never the government. How ridiculously illiterate. There was a king and government system at that time that they were set up and they didn't exist before that. The government collected taxes, yes, has nothing to do with a tithe. It's not a tithe. Uh, I mean, it's just ridiculously stupid, really. Um, he's confusing the days of Moses with the days of David in 1 Chronicles 24, which is elementary basics. He doesn't know regarding the Old Testament, which he hates. Uh, basically, when it comes to the Old Testament, this guy should just keep his mouth shut because he's no expert. So he shouldn't come off as one because he's not. Lie number four, the whole tithe was never, ever given to the temple priests. Oops. 10% of the Third year's increase only, says Deuteronomy and says Tobit, uh, where we completely understand it. That's one year every three years. That's it. He can't even read Deuteronomy, and he doesn't know the Old Testament nor the New. Again, he represented it as 23%, which is a lie. We've covered this in Deuteronomy chapters 14 and 26 in the previous couple of videos, and Tobit as well. Uh, and it's very easy to understand. We're not going to break it down again. He does not. He calls, number five, the tithe a government tax. That's stupid. I mean, what a clown circus. Again, he's better to just keep quiet, uh, as he is no expert on the Old Testament. And he says the dumbest things. Because, well, he doesn't know the history of Israel, number one, clear. Again, six lies right here in a two-minute segment about the tithe, which he doesn't know and doesn't teach. And one cannot understand the New Testament without understanding the Old, which the apostles and Messiah preached from what? Well, the Old Testament, it's all they had. He doesn't read the Old Testament and is no expert, at least not without a lens, he's no expert on it. 
Not at all. A tax, basically, was not what a tithe was. It was a tithe, a tenth. It was an offering of sort uh, of money to basically fund the temple priests, the Levites, once every three years. Once every three years of that year's income, or increase, actually. Uh, keeping the feast, he doesn't, and preaches against, fervently in ignorance, which is funded by the second year's tithe uh, for an individual. And the third year, the final year of a cycle of three, the tithe that year, 10%, no more. It's not added. These are 10% each year. Uh, but that 10% of one's increase went to the poor and needy, the widows and orphans. Of course, Tobit gave over and above almsgiving, and so should we. The Bible says to give to the poor, the needy, the widows and the orphans, even above other years. But specifically, that third year, all 10% goes to take care of the poor. Wow, poverty would be eradicated if we all did. This guy doesn't even know the Bible. This is a basic principle. He has conducted little research by this answer. He just goes right to the Pharisee trash and doesn't even know how to vet it, and that's sad. There were no taxes under Moses and the judges, period. That's stupid. The kings instituted such, and they were not a tithe, but a government tax in that instance, and that has nothing to do with the tithe. For instance, though there are no direct passages, in the KJV, King Saul was the first king, of course, we know that, uh, which means it was no longer a theocracy. I don't know why John MacArthur doesn't know that, uh, but according to the New King James, uh, 1 Samuel 17, 25, actually demonstrates King Saul collected taxes, as here's a situation where he exempted someone from paying taxes, which were required, meaning they were paid. Um, now, if the new KJV uh, is accurate, uh, there is the first tax in Israel. It wasn't one under Moses. Yes, you paid a tithe, but you didn't pay a tax. And the tithe was not a tax. However, and it wasn't 23% either. That's ridiculous. However, this becomes more definitive with the next kings, which are not a theocracy, and still under Saul... There were no priestly courses still. They started with David. Duh. MacArthur is illiterate on this topic and should really be quiet. In 1 Chronicles 21, David did not collect taxes at first, but then when he listened to Satan, understand that, uh, he began to sin, collecting taxes. Hmm. See, the Bible government doesn't collect tax. And tax is actually sinful uh, in terms of applying Bible doctrine. Sorry, but it is. Now, one that does, it's just not Yahuwah's form of government. Yes, we are to pay our taxes, render unto Caesars that which is Caesars, right? But render unto Elohim that which is Elohim's. But understand, that is the case. David was tempted by Satan to conduct a census which is typically for what? Well, it's for taxing. Wouldn't have any other reason to do it. That's why you do conduct a census. Uh, kings do it all the time, especially the Caesars do it, and that's why, because they were assessing their wealth and taxing. In part, and uh, basically David uh, did this, uh, and then he repented for it, see, because it was sin. There you go, how about that? Yeah, I mean, our governments today, it, guys, it's it's not following the Bible. Let's be honest. It's just not. Uh, don't expect it to. Uh, we're in the last days, and we're in the days where, of course, the world prefers its government system, uh, even though it is not performing what it's supposed to do in claim. This was not about tithing, nor the Levite priest. MacArthur's clueless on this. David did not have a theocracy. That's stupid. Now, definitively, though, by the time of King Solomon, Solomon collected taxes, uh, but the government did so. It wasn't about the temple priest. The tithe was separate and not a tax, period, the end. 
Solomon's taxing the people began in the days of building the temple. There's no doubt about that, but that taxing became unbearable later after Solomon turned from Yahuwah, as we see in 1 Kings 12, 3, and 4. And when he did, of course, he was not following Yahuwah's system because taxing is not Yahuwah's. It's not from him. It is not his way. It's not the Bible way. So anyone that says, oh, but the Constitution, blah, 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 well, the Constitution of the U.S. actually has no taxes. So, whoops, uh, how do you do that? Well, it shouldn't need it. The actual federal government is supposed to remain small in its original republic uh, you know, system and format. It's not supposed to be bloated like it is today uh, with a $34 trillion debt, which is probably more like over $200 trillion, uh, when you uh, assess unfunded liabilities. That's ridiculous uh, and really is a collapse waiting to happen. It's kind of hard to imagine that's not the case. And Answers in Second Asterisk nails that the prophet Ezra knew that America would rise and he knew that it would fall. MacArthur simply does not know the Old Testament and, really, again, should re refrain from talking as an expert on the topic, because he's not. Definitively, King Solomon collected taxes, but the government did so, again, not the temple priests. The tithe was separate and not a tax, ever. Even when he collected for the building of the temple, which he did do, but it wasn't just the temple, and some people try to focus on that. It wasn't just a temple. It was over and above the tithe, number one. Number two, it also was the building of his palace and government building, basically, because uh, that's where he operated the government from. It was still separate, and that was a tax, yes, but it's, it wasn't a tithe, and it had nothing to do. Obviously, a special circumstance indeed, uh, but nevertheless, Solomon got carried away with it. He obviously continued the tithe years later. He still, I mean, uh, tax, uh, he's still taxing people when he should not be. See, this is what happens when you have a king. And hey, that's what Samuel warned. That's what Yahuwah warned. If you want a king, you're going to be a slave to that king in just two generations. And guess what? They were, because Solomon is that generation. Wow. And finally, number six, John MacArthur, Johnny Mac, doesn't seem, again, to have even an elementary handle on the Old Testament as David was a king, which is a monarchy, essentially by definition. No, that's not splitting hairs, folks. That's a big deal difference. He said it was a theocracy uh, with a temple priest, uh, you know, basically collecting money for the government, which is stupid and didn't happen. He's confusing the days of Moses with the change uh, that Israel had cried for when they wanted a king, which changed the format of the government. You would think he would know that story. I, I, I imagine he probably does, yet he forgot it in this two-minute interview. Yahuwah finally said, go ahead, Samuel, let them have their king. Uh, again, two generations later, they were basically entering slavery, paying taxes, and Solomon was guilty of that. Yes, again, it was called sin under David, and he stopped it. Hmm, think about that. Now, yes, Saul, the first king and forward, you know, collected government taxes, it appears, as kings in a monarchy. Certainly by King Solomon definitively. David certainly did do it, though he repented from it. But in either event, those are not theocracies. It was no longer the structure of Moses, which is very clear in Samuel's whole story of how he went back and forth with Yahuwah when they demanded a king. And Yahuwah finally just says, go ahead, let him have it. Basically, it operated differently without the 24 courses in the days of Moses. Uh, there was no government tax. Uh, he clearly has no clue, MacArthur, of their operation. The tithe never operated the government. That's illiterate. The 24 priestly courses, he doesn't even know, started with David under a monarchy. And there were no priestly courses in the days of Moses or the judges when Israel did have a theocracy where the prophet led the nation based on Yahuwah's words, which is his system. The tithe, and taxing is not included in that period. The tithe 
was never 23% either, but a tithe or tenth, period. That was Yahuwah's system, but he is confusing it, MacArthur is, because his knowledge is very childish on this topic. Uh, when it comes to the basic foundations of Scripture, it is amazing how little he knows. This is because he doesn't know the Old Testament. Thus, he has no foundation on the Word because of that. His answer sounds intelligent almost. And yet, you know, these dunderheads are really good at sounding like they know what they're talking about. So scholarly, it appears, yet really so stupid. And his Sabbath and feasts, uh, views are reckless and gross negligence. Uh, maybe someday we will just take those and dismantle them. We already have in rest the case for Sabbath. Read it. Read it and then go listen to John MacArthur. And we guarantee you, you will see the glaring difference. Uh, that's just fact. Simple basics he should know. And he just simply does not. So what is MacArthur doing, though? And we'll wrap this up. Uh, and he does often because he is committed to denominational doctrine and traditions of men from the Pharisees over the Bible ones. He really doesn't know. And they're very foreign to him, obviously. Uh, and, and he makes no effort to test his fallacious doctrines because he's so rooted in it with his, you know, whatever degree. He's skirting the Bible, and he lands on Josephus the Pharisee, whose false doctrine he repeats as that of the Old Testament, which, of course, he preaches has passed away. Uh, he hates the Old Testament, and he, uh, he hates Josephus too. He, he hates, you know, anything to do with the Old Testament, which he thinks is Judaism, and it's not. That's the opposite of the Bible. See, if he actually knew the Bible, if he actually knew the Old Testament, he would love it. He wouldn't hate it because he'd see it's the foundation of the new. He is right about one thing, though. Any money we give to a modern church, which is not a Bible ecclesia mostly, is an offering. It is not a tithe by definition. Therefore, any church demanding a tithe, unless they're keeping the feasts and the Sabbaths, which of course his don't, really should be calling it an offering and not a tithe. Now, basically, that's true. Uh, and speaks volumes because if the church is not the Bible replacement for the temple priest worship system, what on earth is it? Hmm. Well, it's a monster that sucks money and resources out of its people, uh, far away from its first love and far away from the biblical foundation too many times, which we've proven often on this channel. You know this if you have watched our other videos. Some will be offended by this, and for that, you are welcome. The truth of the word offends indeed, and we intend to offend you if you're not following the word. Absolutely 100%. We are happy to do so. That is how you show love. You rebuke. Those who you will not rebuke, you do not love. That's it. Not when you see them doing something wrong. This is a channel for the mature, not for children, and we always get these little snidey comments, uh, and we'll always mute them because they're children. Uh, but Tobit's tithe vets his truth, and the reason you do not see this in the New Testament as a professed new doctrine is because it's not new. As most of our practices, biblically, originate in the Old Testament. Why would they need to be professed as new when they're not new? However, professing them as passed away when the Bible doesn't, well, just makes one a Satanist, sorry, but that's opposite of the Bible. What do you think Yahushua and the apostles preached from? They didn't have a New Testament. They preached from the Old Testament. They will tell you Paul didn't tithe. Then he was a sinner breaking the law. Oops. Yes, he did tithe, he kept the feast, and he kept the Sabbaths. That's what he says. Of course he tithed. Peter, a Levite by blood. Yup, his brother Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist in Qumran, Bethabara, where the Levite temple priests were exiled and operated. He was a Levite, meaning so was Peter. Whether a practicing one or not, he was by blood. 
Watch our original canon series, and we really break that down. Peter was collecting tithes. What? Well, we'll get there too. And again, biblically, we'll show you in the next video. We'll breeze through the scriptures on tithing and clarify them as well uh, coming in these next videos. Uh, and all of this will really start to make sense. You really need to watch these. I think it'll be five videos at least to start. Uh, and uh, it all ties together and, and it really will come with a coherent, full understanding. I'm not saying everybody has to agree with everything we say. You don't. It doesn't matter. It's okay. Uh, but test it. Prove all things for yourself. Is Tobit accurate in his tithing? You better believe he was. The basis is there, and he followed Deuteronomy. You can see it very clearly. This has been obscured because a church not owed any tithe has been demanding it in many cases, and doing so following after Pharisees stupidly, very stupidly. Josephus the Pharisee documented this instead of following the Bible manner of giving. Yes, we should still tithe. Ten percent. That's a tithe. And we should still give to those if you have them in your life who are teaching the feasts and Sabbaths and helping you to execute them. Some of you attend feasts and Sabbaths administered by someone in your area, your region, your local uh, group, and you should be giving to them. Not a church, uh, necessarily, who doesn't teach these things that are Bible, but teaches against the law, literally teaching lawlessness, which is, by definition, in the New Testament, sin. Ouch. Now, that's a foundational doctrine. There are churches that do restore the feast and Sabbaths. There are, and they would qualify appropriately. Some watch this channel, of course. Some of you don't have that, and really, this is your time to step up and become that administrator. Do it. Get people together. Gather the people. Teach them the feast. You don't have to do it perfectly. It's okay. It is not about degrees, uh, because those with degrees don't know what they're doing anyway. No one should demand a tithe, and we are not telling you that. It is up to the individual. Even in the New Testament, there were those who made financial commitments and lied to the Holy Spirit. I think we'll cover that too. Uh, reporting a lower amount so they could keep more for themselves. But the point of that story is not about money. It was about the lying to the Holy Spirit, which caused their deaths. Not money not percentages. They made a commitment and they lied and they didn't keep it. It was a heart thing. For them, it was about money, yes, no doubt, and the love of it, the root of all evil, right? But the Holy Spirit knew their heart and they made a promise to the Holy Spirit that they didn't keep. Now, we'll cover that some in uh, probably in the series here and we will go through some of the illiterate accusations that claim Tobit equates almsgiving to salvation. Does he say that? No, they can't even read. Actually, the Archangel Raphael did even, uh, yeah, and the problem is, as usual, they can't even read. Living long on the earth, a promise we see in Scripture for giving, oops, uh, is not salvation, spiritual salvation, and Tobit never says almsgiving is spiritual salvation. That is idiotic. That is nuts, really. You do not need a title or degree, and maybe best if you don't have one to understand this stuff, because it seems like they mess it up more than anybody. Just look at this TV preacher we covered. He is leading the lambs to slaughter. He doesn't know the Bible. He's not a Bible teacher, unfortunately. He's teaching the doctrines of men. He's teaching Phariseeism. One of the most uneducated out there, and he claims to be a doctor. Doctor of what? The occult? Phariseeism? Yeah. No, thank you. Uh, that's what he just preached, but not the Bible. He doesn't know uh, it on several of the most important basic topics, and that's sad. Now then, there are two other years, because that is once every three years. We fund the feasts and Sabbaths with an entire year's tithe, one year. 
uh, but spent it over three years. That's how that that's how Tobit did it. Uh, and finally, the third of these three years, uh, we give directly to the widows and orphans, not to organizations nor churches, with major overhead that suck away the money that should really go to the cost. You know, I've heard funds like UNICEF and others taking as much as 90% of the money or more uh, for their board, CEO, president, staff, etc., and overhead, uh, I mean, less than 10% even gets to who you gave to. So just give directly. That is not the Bible. And we have a responsibility to vet these guys. Some churches fall in similar categories, maybe not 90%, but maybe they're taking 50% or 60%. But either way, it, it, it doesn't fit the tone and tenor of the biblical giving and tithe uh, the third year. That's why we should just do it directly. So there you go. Many have asked for this, and this is our view on tithing. The modern church has no clue, generally. Test it and understand more videos to come on this topic. If there's a scripture that we haven't covered yet, we're probably going to get to it. So just relax. Always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone. About 382 AD, in the days of Jerome, known for the Latin Vulgate, a new term began to circulate in Bible scholarship, according to R.H. Charles. Certain texts of historical value, and even canon, were now labeled as something other than inspired scripture. The very concept is a clear redefining of books already in existence, and in most cases, text recorded as inspired scripture and Bible canon now somehow in question by those without any such authority. This paradigm remains today even further rooted as if it ever represented the historical approach to these Old Testament texts as some vet as truth. How do these texts stand up to the Torah test? The answer on many of these books will likely shock especially scholars who have never actually conducted such research, which becomes evident. It's not in their paradigm. This canon was already chosen before there were Pharisees in Jerusalem and before there was ever a Catholic church. Those factions do not get to legitimately form councils to vote on that which was already settled, fact, long before, even in archaeology. You are entering a zone for truth with our new Apocrypha Test series. Follow along, and together we will dispel the myths of modern scholarship. And man, are they profoundly lacking in intellect on this topic. You will see. Not anymore. Download your copies of Volume 1 and Volume 2 of our comprehensive Apocrypha research 
free in ebook today or get your copies at apocryphatest.com. All links are there. We now begin.